Welcome back, Deep Divers. Ready for another fascinating mystery? Oh, I'm always ready for a good mystery. What have we got today? Today we're heading to Indonesia. We're diving into the controversy surrounding Gunung Padang. Ah, Gunung Padang. That's the one with the steppe terraces and stone formations. Right? right. But here's the thing. It might be more than just an interesting hill. Some researchers believe it's the oldest pyramid on Earth. Hold on. A pyramid. Yeah. And we're not talking just a little bit older than the Egyptian pyramids. How old are we talking then? Try 25,000 years old. 25,000 years? Wow. That's... That would mean sophisticated civilizations existed way earlier than we currently think. Exactly. That's why Gunning Padang is such a hot topic right now. It could completely rewrite our understanding of human history. So what evidence do they have to back up this claim? 25,000 years is a long time. Well, proponents of the pyramid theory point to deep core samples. These samples show layered structures under the surface. Layered structures? Yeah. And some researchers believe these layers were deliberately placed. They argue that it would have taken serious planning and effort to create such intricate layering so far underground. Hmm. So it's not something that could have happened naturally. That's what they're saying. They compare it to baking a cake. You wouldn't expect the layers to form randomly. Right? That's a good analogy. OK, I'm intrigued, but I'm guessing not everyone's buying this theory. Oh, you're right. There's been a lot of pushback from other archaeologists and geophysicists. Many are skeptical of the whole pyramid idea. What are their arguments? Well, for one, they say the pyramid shape could just be a naturally formed hill. The material could have rolled down over thousands of years and created that layered effect. So, a coincidence of nature. That's what they think. They also point out that dating soil samples doesn't necessarily date the structure itself. True. It's like analyzing a crumb to determine the age of a whole cake. Exactly. And then there's the question of those layered structures. Could they have been created by natural geological processes, too? Oh, that's a good point. Like erosion, maybe? Exactly. Skeptics argue that heavy rains over millennia could have eroded the hillside and created those stepped layers. Okay, that makes sense. But what about the people who built this supposed pyramid? Shouldn't there be some evidence of them? That's another key point the skeptics raise. They say there's a lack of typical human activity indicators in the soil layers. Like what? Things like charcoal from fires, bone fragments, or tool remnants. Yeah. You know, stuff you'd expect to find in a place where people lived. But those things are missing at Gunung Padang. Pretty much, yeah. And that's a big red flag for a lot of researchers. It makes them question the whole human construction theory. So it sounds like the skeptics have some pretty strong arguments. Where does that leave the pyramid theory? Well, things got so heated that the journal, which originally published the pro-pyramid research, Archaeological Prospection, actually retracted the paper. They retracted it? Wow. That's a big deal. It is. They said the conclusions weren't sufficiently supported by the evidence. So you can say that's a win for the skeptics. So, case closed? Well, not quite. The lead researcher who proposed the pyramid theory is sticking to his guns. He still believes there's more to gun on Padang than meets the eye. In fact, he even suggested that the retraction was a form of censorship. Oh, wow. So the debate rages on. It certainly does. <sighs> So what do we have here? An ancient pyramid built by a super advanced ice age civilization or just a naturally formed hill that got everyone a little too excited. Sounds like a real archaeological thriller. But before we jump to any conclusions, there's actually a third possibility we need to consider. It's kind of a middle ground between the two main theories. It's called the protoculture theory. What if Gunung Padang isn't a full blown pyramid? But it's also not entirely natural, like maybe something in between. Okay, a middle ground. I like where this is going. What's this protoculture idea all about? So imagine a society that existed before agriculture really took off. They might have had some basic technology, but nothing super advanced. So not a civilization in the classic sense. Right, not with cities and organized farming and all that, but also more advanced than just simple nomadic hunter-gatherers. Got it. More like... I don't know, maybe they were starting to gather in certain spots, maybe even seasonally. Exactly. And maybe they developed rituals, social structures, and even started to manipulate the environment in some basic ways. Okay. I can see how this could tie into Gunung Padang. But how could they have modified the site without advanced tools? Well, the theory is that the hill itself was already there, formed naturally, 
but this protoculture might have enhanced it over time using simple tools. So no massive stones or anything like that. Right. Maybe they created some simple terraces on the slopes, you know, just to create gathering spaces or areas for rituals. So working with a natural landscape instead of building something completely new. Exactly. It's much more subtle. They might have also arranged naturally occurring stones, maybe for astronomy or symbolic purposes. And I guess they could have used natural caves or hollows in the hill for shelter or sacred spaces too. Right. It all fits with the idea of them working with what was already there. This protoculture idea is actually pretty convincing. It could explain why the hill looks modified without needing a super advanced civilization. It's a neat theory for sure, but it does have its own challenges. Like if this protoculture really existed, where's the more concrete evidence? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, if they were using basic tools, their traces would be pretty subtle, right? Exactly. Plus it's been thousands of years. It's not easy to find those kinds of traces. It's almost like we're dealing with a lot of what ifs at this point. There's definitely a lot we don't know and the evidence is definitely open to interpretation. That's what makes archeology span so cool though, right? It's like a giant puzzle. Exactly. And Gunung Padang is one heck of a puzzle. It could totally change the way we think about human history. It's amazing to think this one site could hold so many secrets. Whether it's a pyramid, a natural formation, or the work of a mysterious protoculture, it raises some huge questions about our past. It really makes you wonder, what else is out there? Maybe there are even older sites just waiting to be found. It's definitely possible. Every new discovery has the potential to change everything we thought we knew. So. Is Gunung Padang the key to unlocking an entirely new chapter of human history? Maybe. That's the beauty of archaeology. The journey of discovery never ends. So much we don't know. It really makes you think. Mm. But hey, speaking of pyramids, what about, you know, like the official title? If Gunung Padang is as old as some people say, does that mean the, uh, what is it, the Djoser Step Pyramid in Egypt? Is that still the oldest? Well, for now, yeah, I think it's safe to say that the Djoser Step Pyramid is still holding on to that title. But Ganung Padang has really uh, stirred things up. Oh, absolutely. I mean, what we think is settled history one day right. could be totally flipped on its head the next. Exactly. You know, archaeology is always changing. New discoveries pop up, new ways to date things. And sometimes even, like, rethinking the stuff we already have can change our understanding. It's pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. It makes you wonder what else is out there just waiting to be found. Like, what if there's something even older than Gunung Padang hidden away somewhere? Wouldn't that be something? I mean, think about it. Every dig, every artifact, every new piece of data, it could unlock a whole new part of the story of us, hmm. of humanity. So deep divers, what do you all think about this Gunung Padang mystery? What's your take? ancient pyramid, just a natural hill, or maybe the work of that protoculture we talked about. We want to know what you think. Head down to the comments and let us know your theories. And hey, while you're there, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Yeah, we'll keep bringing you these deep dives into all sorts of awesome mysteries. So until next time, keep on exploring.